Hey everyone, Tim with Collect Jurassic, back with another news update covering tons of new Jurassic World Dominion toys from Mattel on the way this summer. Of course, we're talking about a lot of Wave 2 toys after the big spring push. This is part three. The other two parts covered some of the core toys and minis, but this video is going to be talking mainly about Hammond Collection, which is easily the assortment that I am most excited about this year from Mattel. So far, the figures we've gotten have been fantastic, and what's on the way looks even better. Um, I, some of my favorite characters for sure. So so this will be a very enthusiastic video from me. So let's jump right into the first figure here. This is the Hammond Collection Gallimimus. The packaging is familiar because this is the same size assortment that the Velociraptor came in, which I love that figure. Just an incredible toy. And I'm thrilled to be getting a Gallimimus in the same scale and the same price point. At $12.99 a pop, uh, these figures are just an excellent value and lets you, um, you know, really create some herds. You know, with Gallimimus, you need a, you need at least a few to create a proper herd. So that price point definitely makes that a little more doable. The figure itself is beautiful. Obviously, this is supposed to be, um, you know, evoking that Jurassic Park Gallimimus, not the Jurassic World Gallimimus. Um, and you know, Mattel's given us some pretty great Gallimimus uh, figures already from that first film. Legacy Collection comes to mind. I know the first Battle Damage Gallimimus they did was also a pretty good um, kind of representation of that. And that being said, this Hammond Collection figure is pretty close. has a little bit of that stylizing we've seen with the Hammond Collection figures. I, I call it kind of toyification. Some of the proportions are a little bit tweaked, but I mean, look at this detail here on the face. Um, definitely better than any Gallimimus figure we've gotten so far. Has that jaw articulation too. Um, has those big giant Jurassic Park Gallimimus eyes. Um, and it has that white underbelly too, which, um, you know, a lot of us think of the Gallimimus from Jurassic and we think of the Kenner figure that's like blue and tan. Um, but really, that's not what they look like. They actually were like... Um, they definitely were tan, but they had this like white underbelly base that um, this Hammond Collection figure actually really gets right. Um, except for the bottom legs, I think those are supposed to be a little bit whiter. But otherwise, the coloration is actually pretty pretty dang good. I love the stripes on the back too. But um, I mean, here in this picture, you can see what's really special about the Hammond Collection. That's articulation. Uh, I already talked about the jaw, but you can see the head articulates on the neck. The tech the neck articulates where it meets the body. Of course, the legs are fully articulated the arms articulate at the shoulder and in the elbow um, it even looks like maybe the wrists have a little bit of articulation hard to say from this photo but um I, I don't know maybe they don't but in any case all of those joints across the whole body including that bendable tail with on the ball joint you're gonna be able to do lots of poses with gallimimus and if you're like me and are buying <laughs> Uh, more than I care to admit on a video, um, you'll be able to make a really cool herd with doing all sorts of different movements. So um, love this one. Can't wait to grab it. Um, but this is the one that I'm probably most excited about with this next wave, and that's Dr. Alan Grant. Um, my all-time favorite Jurassic uh, hero, <laughs> my all-time favorite character from any movie is Alan Grant. And while Mattel has given us a couple of versions of this figure, uh, Legacy and Hammond Collection come to mind, this looks like the best one yet for a couple different reasons. Um, you know, the Legacy Collection version is pretty bare bones, doesn't have a lot going on. Um, the likeness is questionable. The Amber Collection figure was like really blue and his face didn't look quite quite right. But this new version um, looks like it's the perfect synthesis of everything. Um, you know, the, the pants with the little pockets and the belt. I mean, that's something we haven't seen on any of the other figures and the red handkerchief. Um, you know, it's all here with all that, those classic pieces and more. We also have interchangeable hands holding the claw. We have an interchangeable glove hand, which I'll get to later. The flare, they always always are giving us that flare. And also um, an Alan Grant head without the hat on. I believe you can take the sunglasses off the hat version two, but they just don't have a photo of that. But here's a close up of that hat version head. So again, the hat's not something that comes off. It, it's it's the head that comes off. You can either put the head on with the hat or without, and then the sunglasses uh, attached to the hat head. But again, I believe they come off of the, this head too. They might leave a couple little holes on the side of the head, but um, they are removable. But look at the detail on that, the hat in this photo. Pretty incredible. Um, Hammond Collection packs in the detail at the smaller scale, which is what I love about it. But I also really like about Alan Grant. Again, I'm going to go back to his pants. I think they look a lot better than anything we got with Legacy Collection or, or um, Amber Collection. They, they, they got the, the tan tweaked a little bit, a little bit lighter. Same thing with the blue, not quite as saturated as the, as the uh, 
Ham- the Amber Collection figure. Oh, my tongue gets twisted talking about all these different assortments. Um, but here's the gloved hand in action. So his left hand has the glove on it, and he's holding the baby Velociraptor. I'm looking at it with concern. So straight out of the movie, um, nice little accessory. Of course, the flare we already talked about. They always give these figures flares, and I get it. The flare is iconic to Jurassic. It's an iconic scene, especially with Alan Grant and um, Malcolm. But every time we get those figures, we get a flare. So if you're a longtime collector at this point, you have more flares than you know what to do with. Um, but we're getting another one with Alan Grant, um, and you know that it is what it is. Um, but again, look at the articulation on this figure with the double jointed knees and double jointed elbows, uh, the wrists are articulated. So we're able to do a lot more poses with this new version of Alan Grant than we were able to do with the uh, Legacy Collection version. But similar to the Amber Collection version, he has an interchangeable hand holding his raptor claw. So you're not, you don't have to keep track of this little tiny claw to, and losing it. Instead, you have to keep track of a little tiny hand and not lose it. Um, but, uh, you know, I love these options they have for the Hammond Collection figures. You know, Malcolm had the coat sleeves and all that stuff. So um, letting you kind of take these little tiny figures and do some interchangeable uh, features to them definitely lends to the, like the premium feel of them overall. But back to dinosaurs, a medium dinosaur here. This is Ceratosaurus. Um, definitely a Jurassic species that a lot of people forget about. Made its debut in Jurassic Park 3. Um, and then uh, and you didn't really hear about it until Camp Cretaceous. And then obviously with Jurassic World Evolution, it's become kind of a bigger deal too with the video games. But uh, I always remember it as the die cast little Kenner figurine that came out in 1993 with the red head. And they've really kind of always brought that through all forms of the Jurassic version of this species, including this Hammond Collection figure. And this thing looks awesome. I love it. Um, it definitely doesn't, I was a little worried it was going to look cartoony like Camp Cretaceous. Um, but really it looks awesome Uh, it looks you know it looks definitely like the Camp Cretaceous version, but not quite the Jurassic Park 3 version necessarily. But I think this is being marketed as a Jurassic Park 3 figure, which um, will allow because the detail looks fantastic. I mean, look at this thing. Look how the, the, the cool graphic stripe throughout the body and the detail is just impeccable. Um, here's a close up of Stratosaurus's face. I mean, that's probably... I'll go on record saying it, one of the most beautiful Jurassic figures that Mattel has given us. I mean, this is just um, the detail here, the posture, the expression, all of it is just top notch. Um, Obviously, only possible at this price point with all this articulation. Can you get this sort of, you know, these sorts of results? But it really just gets me excited about Hammond Collection because these figures are looking more and more fantastic as each wave comes out. Um, And, uh, you know, this one's got all detail in all the right places. It's got painted nails. It's got painted claws. You know, that, that's kind of stuff that we're missing on the main line. Paint going all the way down to the tip of the tail. Um, just those premium uh, kind of uh, additions that make Ceratosaurus look just incredible. I mean, and of course, articulation wise, it's got articulation at the base of the neck. It's got the jaws that open up on the top and the bottom, articulation in the arms and in the legs, and of course, the articulated tail. So, um, I mean, we already know from the first wave of Hammond Collection that these things are just solid figures that can really do some unique poses. People had Parasaurolophus bouncing on one foot, all that stuff. So um, Stratosaurus is definitely going to be able to do some some really cool poses likewise since it's that medium size assortment. Um, love this side profile too because you get an idea of just the amount of paint detail and how t- literally to the tip of the tail they take those stripes, which I think makes all the difference in making this feel like a premium figure. Um, And then of course, you know, back to the articulation, you can do some really cool poses. I love this sort of high alert looking up over the jungle pose that they have of it. Um, It just, I mean, it's just a gorgeous looking paint deco, gorgeous looking sculpt, all coming together to make a premium feeling figure for a species that Jurassic is really starting to embrace the Ceratosaurus. I almost wonder if we're going to start seeing it more in, uh, you know, feature Jurassic um, properties just because they've leave, leaned into it so heavily the past couple of years alongside Ceratops and some other species. But um, um, overall, uh, you know, definitely going to be grabbing at least one of these um, to add to my park because Stratosaurus has been low key, kind of a series favorite since uh, Kenner Jurassic diecast. And we're finally getting this ultimate edition of the species in the Hammond collection figure. Next up is a figure we don't have as many photos um, 
to talk about in this video at the time of recording it anyway. Um, that's the uh, Hammond Collection Triceratops, but the photo we have definitely lets us get a great idea of how awesome this figure is also going to look. Um, it's in this medium-sized box, so uh, same price point as Parasaurolophus baryonyx stratosaurus, but look at the detail here. Right off the bat, I can tell that that is a Jurassic Park Triceratops, not a Jurassic World Triceratops. For the discerning eye, there's definitely a huge difference between the, each movie's kind of version of Triceratops, and I'm happy to say that this one is clearly a Jurassic Park Triceratops. You can just tell in the face, and um, but even in this little brief little windowed box, we can see awesome detail on the horns cracking um it looks just like she does in the uh you know in the first movie i'm hoping that she poses like a sick triceratops too that would just kind of complete it but um it looks awesome and i can't wait to see more photos of this thing to really get an idea of just how amazing of a figure it is speaking of amazing hammond collection figures who can forget the t-rex of course we've covered that in a video before but i do have um at least one new photo to show of this um probably most anticipated release for a lot of us um, um, the premium Hammond Collection T-Rex. And that's a box shot. If you tuned into my Generation Jurassic coverage, you probably saw some in-hand box shots, but this is the official box shot. It really gets you a crisp, clean, clean look at what the packaging is going to look like. Um, this kind of premium window format they've adopted with all the figures lets you see most of the figure, but not all of it. And uh, obviously the tail comes detached as well, which saves some shelf space or display space if you're displaying things um, mint in box. But um, here it is in a package. Looks like it's going to have its mouth open, t uh, tongue showing. Um, should be pretty attention grabbing on the shelf, I would think. So um, that's Hammond Collection T-Rex in the box. Really looking forward to that one along with the rest of you, I'm sure. Um, but that is basically all of the new Jurassic World Dominion toys we have to cover right now coming out this summer. Of course, there'll be some surprises here and there. And then before long, we'll be talking about the fall push, which will probably undoubtedly be just as impressive as these last two waves. So stay tuned for that. But again, I'm Tim with Collect Jurassic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.